What's going on guys, Blair Chaos here with Hearts of Iron 4. You have no idea how long I've looked forward to this. I am a big fan of the Hearts of Iron series, I freaking love them. And to see this come out after so long is like a, I'm like a kid in a candy store. It's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm the Blair Chaos and this is Hearts of Iron 4. This is basically one of Paradox's, new, or this is Paradox's newest game. Came out on Friday, this is the Tuesday, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, my history of Hearts of Iron is a bit iffy. I missed out on one entirely. Two, I have... I think it's like 250 hours with Hearts of Iron 2. And 100 hours of Arsenal Democracy. I friggin' loved Hearts of Iron 2. And Hearts of Iron 3, I didn't play that much of because there's just so much complicated nonsense with it. The Order of Battle was ridiculous. Uh, I, d I know the DLC apparently fixes that to make it a lot easier to maintain, but by that time I'd given up on it. And now here we have Hearts of Iron 4, which I have been looking forward to for so long. It's awesome. So, we're going to do a few campaigns with this, and I'm going to enjoy it, because this is going to be fun. So, um, I actually have a small few games, I've done most of Soil, I get the idea of the game, but I've not really done a full campaign, I've done bits of messing about. So we've got a choice in two scenarios right now, January 1st, 1936, The Gathering Storm, and August uh, 14th of August, 1939, Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg is basically the war, the war starting, 1930, The Gathering Storm is basically building up to it. So we're going to sign 1939, <clears throat> The Gathering Storm. Dark times are coming in Europe. Hitler has consolidated his power, and his attention is now increasingly drawn beyond Germany's borders. Mussolini's Italy continues to embark on daring military adventures, while the Empire of Japan stands poised to attack China and Asia. Almost 20 years have passed since the end of the Great War, and the world has yet again been doused in gasoline. A single spark may be all it takes. So, we get to choose our nation. You can do any nation in the world through this, or they get, like, they'll give you the interesting, air quotes, countries. We have a choice. France, America, Britain, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the Soviets. I'm going to play as Britain. Why? Because I'm British, damn you. <laughs> um, we of course, with the British Empire, so our leader is Neville Chamberlain, this chap. We're a democratic, we're a democratic regime. Our next election is November 1939, our ruling party is conservative. Um, uh, but for a brief history of us, for the nation that are coins the game. Although the United Kingdom emerged victorious from the Great War, the foundations of his great empire were shaken to its core. A generation of the country's finest, mu finest were lost in the trenches of Flanders and northern France, while unread, um, unrest spreads throughout the Commonwealth and massive debts accrued. With the trauma of the last war still in fresh memory, the country now faces the prospect of another. It's becoming increasingly clear that there will be no peace for our time. We have what are called national spirits. These are basically perks or... I guess malices you get. You can get more during the game, but they're unique to c countries, and you have to trigger them somehow. For Britain, we have British Stoicism, so we don't drift uh, between ideologies as easily. We also create factions. I love the description of this one. If you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs, and blame it on you. If you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same. Yours is the earth, and nothing that's in it, and which is more. You'll be a man, my son. We also have the Awards Endor Wars, which is basically the Great War happened very recently, and we're not inclined to send people to die again, so we have 25% less recruitable pops. And we have King George V, the national fig uh, popular figurehead, who gives us national unity plus 15%. Rallying around the King of the United Kingdom and the British Dominions, as well as the Emperor of India, the British people stand united and proud of their imperial legacy. Also, you can also get a view of the country, which yeah, we're here, we, this is us. We do have the Empire. I'm going to play on recruit difficulty because I do not know how to play this game at all. I, I, <laughs> I don't think anyone does, really. So, we can put out an Iron Man mode, I'd rather not. I'm basically not, I don't, I don't really deal with the autosaves. And we have National AI Focus, uh, Historical AI Focus, sorry. They go through it in a sort of historical pattern. It makes sense when you see it. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's see what we can do with the UK, shall we? I 
I've been looking at this for so long. It's, it's like that awkward moment when you realise, oh my god, I'm you know everything's there finally. <laughs> it's back. Oh, you have no idea how happy I was when I, when the pre-order first came up. There is a lot to explain in this game, and I'm pretty sure I can never explain it all because I don't know it all. I'm learning as I go. <laughs> And I know I'm going to make a ton of mistakes. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. It's got that ominous feeling, you know, that things are going to go wrong. <laughs> That's me, in a nutshell. Right, so we're in. First things first. The world! Britain's situation. We are the United Kingdom, as you can see here. The UK is comprised of the UK, obviously. We have land in the Caribbean down here in Guyana. In the Caribbean, and that's Haiti. I thought we had one down here. Guess not. Um, we have land in the colonies down in Africa, down in Sierra Leone, Ghana, Nigeria. We have all the way through Egypt down here towards South Africa. We also own um, Abu Dhabi, Aden, and Jordan. Thank you. Uh, we don't own Transjordan, or Iraq, I guess it's called in this. We own bits of land down here in Africa. In Africa. Asia, sorry, the Pacific. We also have our dominions, or our vassals, I guess, in this case. Canada. Um, South Africa. The British Raj. Australia. And New Zealand. You might have noticed two things different right now. Or one thing, I'm guessing, depending on how you look at it. One, the British Raj exists. This is basically India. Um, in Hearts of Iron 2 and 3, it was part of the British Empire. They've put it under its own nation in this one. I kind of see why, and then I kind of don't at the same time. But then again, who am I to complain? I like the idea. We also have South Africa down here with, honestly, a bit weird borders. I'm surprised they don't give it, like, uh, Batuta land or Rhodesia. Then again, you can't really have a clean border here, can you? Oh, well. So, France is not our ally yet. Germany is not the enemy yet, but we know what's going to happen. First off, this section here. Just to explain... Demilitarized zone. No military units may enter it. You can build it up to have military troops later on. So, you know, that's that's the only demilitarized zone in the world. Which is kind of awkward when you think about it. As for how we're going to build up, one, let's go through these. We have research. Research is basically how you develop. Think of it like uh, Victoria 2, where it takes a certain number of research points. And this one takes a certain number of days. We have four research slots. It's not the most in the world. I believe the most is in the hands of the Germans. We have five, I believe, and you can get more. But we're going to get to work. Research is split into different categories based on what they do. You have your infantry, which is all basic stuff to give you new weapons, bear infantry, that kind of thing. Our support battalions, which are your uh, secondaries, so like recon, field hospitals, that kind of thing. We have our armor, tanks, if you couldn't tell. Which you can also get like derivations of them. Like, okay, so let me explain this. Why is it the FT17? That's a Fiat. We have Mother. We have the medium one at least. Now it's not very good, but hey. Um. So on this you can get like two from three. Well, we should explain. Well, I'll go back to this. Just so you know, we've got artillery, which is your artillery, your tank, your anti-air, your artillery, blah blah, blah, and your doctrines. We'll come back to doctrines on their own thing. We also have navy and naval doctrines, air force and air doctrines. Engineering and industry research, as we can do. They all have their own different thing. Infantry, as you can see by infantry, it also splits down the year. 1918, 1936, 1938, 1939. These are kind of the optimal years to research and produce them. So, the game recommends 1938 is when you start researching improved infantry weapons, for example. In equipment, rather. 1918 is when it recommends getting the support weapons. So... It kind of helps you out. You can go ahead of time. Like, we can go for night vision right now. But there's a massive penalty because it's ahead, it's so many years ahead of time. The more time it is ahead, the longer it takes. So as you can see, this takes 1,220, 1,917. This takes 132 days. This takes 469 days. It Generally speaking, inf you do want to grade your infantry a lot because, you know, they're infantry. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? You also get special forces down here, and you're motorized and mechanized, which are extremely useful. I don't think I'll go beyond motorize myself, though. Where do we get if we get this? Motorized artillery, okay. So, for now, I'm going to go for support weapons one. 
We're also going to research... Uh, there, it, there it is. It's in time. Yes. That is speeds of research. Uh, we're going to improve our construction speed. We're also going to build up... Uh, what else do we need? That would be useful for the construction cap. I think I'm going to upgrade to the, the fight of the hurricane. The Hawker Hurricane is awesome. I know it actually is kind of printed wrong because in history it's been referred to as a fighter bomber, but it was a reverse fighter. We have civilian factories. In this game, there are civilian factories and military factories, along with dry docks and other things. The civilian factories help you build up your your non-military sites, like your factories, your dry docks, your synthetic oil plants, that kind of thing. Military factories build up your armies and production for your military. So, and dry docks over your navies. So, you need civi a civilian economy in order to get to work on your military economy. Because without civil factories, you will not build up your military factories. You can convert between them later on, but that's... Yeah, it's a bit awkward. Right now, we want to build up a couple of these. So, we're going to build a couple in East Anglia. A couple in London. You can queue them, but it will go through them, and when they get done, they will just add to the bottom of the queue. Um, they also don't tell you how long these take, which is really annoying. One wall. Actually, wait, I shouldn't be doing it this way. I, should, I just realised something. Um, some here. Both five there. Um, get. One here, one here, two here. And we'll build up Yorkshire as well. We'll build some military factories. That just takes us about over a year. So we'll build some military factories in Wales. In Lancashire. We'll build some dry docks. Which you need dock, a naval dockyards to build your ships. So, yeah. In Lanark, Lothian needs a couple. And Northern England. That'll just be to build up our navy, and we'll get a couple more. We'll get a civilian fac, two of them here, and a few more military facts in Cornwall. We do have access to the rest of the empire as well to build in, but really most of it is just not very good land anyway. Can prove useful, but yeah, that's our civilian economy dealing with stuff. They will build it up, and it will be automatically added into the queue when it's done. We have some that automatically put into the consumer goods category, it's based on what your economy is like. And we have some that are used for trading goods, it's something like one traded goods, it, no, eight traded goods is one factory. Which is really amusing, because you, you can't deny other people, but you have to ask them to supply a factory. Yeah. But these will get built up, um, I probably have built up a bit too much there, but hey, it's better to build too much and build it down. We also have three military factories, we have 14 military factories and 19 dockyards. As the British Empire, we need uh, naval ships. That's probably our biggest thing, because, you know, British Empire. But we need to have, make sure our guys are prepped for warfare. In that case, we have F3 here. Your, your military factories will build up your infantry and artillery equipment, your armoured vehicles, and your planes. Your naval dockyards build anything naval. You do see here, like, a list of materials. The more factories you put in, the more they'll cost, and if you go over your limit, it will put in a uh, minus, negative, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, it's kind of awkward, but eh. I'm going to commit more to infantry equipment. Think, what's this? Aluminium. Got plenty of that. A few more to support equipment. I think like three more to tanks. And three factories to tanks, and we'll throw one more into fighters. Now, you will know it says here, if you go over this, it'll just slow down the factory. So we'll actually one more. It will just slow down the factories, and it'll, it's kind of annoying, but hey. Um, otherwise, they do take time to gear up, as you can see, production efficiency is a thing. If you build a new factory, or start a new line of production, it starts off at 10% and then builds up slowly. If you just change what it's building to something else, it goes down 10% and then builds back up. You can adjust that, though. We also have dark yards, which are used for ships. Let's just get you out of the way. There we go. So, we actually do want to think about how we're going to do this. We've got a lot of amphions. Um, I want to get, I think a few more destroyers won't go on this. So let's actually try and get the destroyers out of the way. 
So we got one five, so we'll go like that. It's gonna take oil either way. We're gonna have to ask someone for oil. Let's just try and get some of these out of the way. We'll put something in the uh, S class sub. We'll come back to the trade thing later, but that's basically how you do it. That's, and if you want to start a new one, you click these, and it goes, okay, what do you want? And you tell it what you want. And it will give you one factory there, start a line, and it'll go like that. As you can see, we actually do have enough going right now that I don't really need to do this, so I'll leave this for now. Next up, we have our national focus. Generally speaking, this is kind of a goal you set your nation. It takes a while, in our case, mostly 70 days. Varies depending on difficulty, obviously. They give you a bonus. And they give you an idea of where to go. So, like, if we go down here, secret weapons, we can get the electronics, rocketry, technology, we can get bonuses. We can get the British small arms, uh, Birmingham small arms, Royal Ordnance, that kind of thing. These all give you a bonus and some other effect. So, if we go far enough down here, influence, Japan, influence China, you can give it democrat, you can give it democratic leanings, which actually gives us more, <laughs> it actually makes more democracy. <laughs> Yay! Um, we can also have war with Japan, which does require quite a bit. Um, they all build up something. They all have one effect or another. And for Britain, there's quite a bit. But you generally want to work your way towards a research slot, these things. So I want to try and get down to industrial efforts, so I want to go for Shadow Scheme. Um, if any others, I don't know if there's any others, annoyingly, which is annoying. And some of these will actually give you and remove um, the spirits of your nation. Don't want to do that for now, so I think I'll go over this end and we'll start on limited rearmament, which will give us more civilian factories. 70 days for more factories. That's not that bad. Two in Lincoln, two in Trinidad. Okay. We have low manpower. We can't really solve that because they just don't come very fast because just I haven't got the right thing. We're also going for sufficient resources. We need four oil. Now, if you click this, I'll click these, it'll tell you who's making a lot, so the US exporting. They've got plenty to trade, and we can ask them for much, so they give you this. It costs you one factory per eight, and you can click this and it'll just say, okay, we need to get this to fill up our current need. We're down by what? Four, so that'll be fine. Cost us one convoy, cost us one civilian factory, but we've got it coming in now. Other than that, what else do we have? National unity. National unity is, um, it's basically how hard it is to make the people surrender. Their willingness to keep fighting. I think the way to explain it is that if you lose a certain percent of your victory locations and it goes above your national unity, they will ask to surrender. So you want to keep this as high as possible. Political power is basically changing governments and influencing people, and it also affects your national focuses, how quick they go for it. Manpower, manpower. Factories, explain itself. Over here we have experience and convoys. Experience is gained through warfare or, in the, or lend lease, and in the case of. Um, well, you can train land troops, you can train your army. You can't train anything else. So, Navy, Air Force, they have to actually fight. Convoys are gained and lost through fights and building, that kind of thing. So, eh. Moving on, we have this, which basically gives us our government. It shows everything we need to know. You can see our laws and government, our research and production, and our military staff. And what we're working on. Over here, we have research. I've been over that. Democracy. Uh, democracy? Diplomacy. You can talk to other nations. I don't know what the point is, but hey. I mean, the thing is, the war's going to happen anyway, so what's the point in talking to people? Saying that, I do want to get some of the bigger nations on our side. Romania would be a good cause. Can we get in it? Well, France is probably friendlier than I am. Yeah, can we get an opinion map mode or something? Doesn't look like there is one. Yeah, it doesn't look like there is one. Oh well. But yeah, the... Romania, I know, is friendly with France. Hungary is friendly with the Germans, so... We can improve relations, but it, it takes a bit to get started and then we got to keep it going. Where we can boost high popularity, which costs us some influence. Uh, political influence, whatever you call it. So we'll do that for now. They are a democracy, which they're helpful. We also have to talk to the Russians at some point, the Finnish, the Swedish, the Norwegians, that kind of thing. And America, especially, considering, you know, the Americans. 
What else is there to do? Well, tons. <laughs> there is way too much in this game to go over. First off, the Gibraltar garrison. Weird. I kind of just want... Uh, do we want to set you at the front? No, we don't. What's up? Okay, first off, we'll borrow the troops in Egypt. Which are these guys. So, you guys, I want you to... Well, we're going to click down here. And then they're their own force. You can right-click to assign them to a force if you need to. It's actually really handy. Uh, this is the... the, the you got to name the whole division, the whole theatre. So this is the... Egyptian frontier. I really should call them the Western Desert Force, to be honest. We can give them a commander. For this, we don't really need a big one. But we're going to grab one anyway. Let's grab... We've got quite a good pool, actually. Let's grab Merton. And we are, you can see, like, we can give them all this. Let's define a front line here with Italy. And here we'll move the troops to try and reinforce that line when we unpause the game. They've got troops down here as well who we could put a front line around the other Italian border. Probably should do, to be honest. Yeah, you'll be another one. And you guys are going to define a front line around the Italians. Which is really, actually, I like the idea, it's really neat. We will eventually reinforce these guys, just to give them a bit more of a boost. Um, the Italians are kind of the big threat, to be fair. I mean, come on, they're the Italians. Leave you alone. Don't think really I need you as well. British, the Raj, they're gonna probably deal, they're gonna have trouble with Japan later on. There we go. Uh, we'll give you your own theatre. Uh, let's go with John Vicar Lodgort, and you guys are just going to have a front line defined there. There's no fort here, there's a naval fort of all things, but hey, we've got submarines. Never actually used them, but it's going to be insane in itself. Got Siam here as well, which we could actually use. Or Ceylon, rather. Did I say Siam? Pillicky me! Ahem. <clears throat> it's. it's it's early in the game, because I, got, I still haven't learned how to play this properly. Or say, or speak English, apparently. What else do we need to do? Well, because we do, we can't, okay, we're going to use the troops of Britain as well. What you can do is, we're going to just select them all, just for now. And we're going to assign them to a new theatre. Oh, by the way, this theatre is... Five east. And this theatre is... The British garrison for now. That will change when we actually get war going. So what else we can do with this, aside from you're giving it a good commander, I'm going to give this one of the field marshals because they have no limit on how many they can take. Uh, we're going to grab you, Mr. Brook. Now we're going to define an area as a garrison area, which is this one. And what they'll do is they will head to that garrison area and do whatever needs to do stuff there. I can't remember if you can... They'll spread that over the assigned day to guard important cities, ports, or objects, as well as handle local systems and mine enemy presence. So they'll all gather up there, eventually. Actually, to be fair, probably is better if we... Uh, see you guys? Yeah. If we set up a garrison area about here. I said garrison area. Okay. About here. Because then they'll use Al Amin as the defensive point. Which is a really good idea. And the Far East Battalion. We will have you set up a garrison. Yes, yes, set up a garrison. Actually, no, we'll leave you at that. Um, escape. There we go. Whew, uh, we're 25 minutes in. I'm pretty sure I haven't explained it all. But there's a ton to go, and we haven't even started the game. Uh, <laughs> we've got trade, which is basically trading. Construction, I've been over. It's basically building up your economy, your factories, that kind of thing. Uh, production, I've shown you. It's this. Recruit and deploy, we need to do this. So, recruit and deploy is... You basically train your troops up, choose what tanks, what groups you want, and deploy them as needed. You can edit them, but it costs experience, so we're not going to do that for a bit. Right now, we do want some infantry divisions, so we're going to train two of them, but then we're going to add 
one each. Um, I don't want any more, that's the question. What do you have? They've got the engineers. It's not bad, to be fair. Um, so we've got here, Egypt. We'll get one more. And I'll be using Singapore. And then we'll get two tank lines going. We could train them as a colonial garrison. Yeah, we'll train a pair of colonial garrisons. Uh, we'll put one in... Actually, well, no, I saw that later. Anyway, that's literally what you do. Now they'll go about gathering all the equipment up, and then they'll get them sorted out. I believe they've got to go for this. So we need the manpower, we need the infantry equipment, we need support equipment. Once they've got the equipment, they'll start training to level what as a level one. They can deploy them, I believe. Units fully equipped. Okay. Over here's logistics. It just shows you the um, positive and minuses of your economy right now, which isn't bad to be fair. That's it, as far as I'm aware. There is a ton in this game to go over. This is going to be part zero again. Um, <laughs> I keep doing part zeros whenever they're going to be big. Oh, um, navies and air forces. We need that in naval map mode. So you can see in naval map mode, this is where all our convoys are going. We've got mass amounts going through the Mediterranean. So we're going to get a good naval presence there in order to keep us safe from the Italians when the war eventually happens. And one out here, possibly to defend against the... Japanese when they come along. Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. Uh, you go in the Far East. And we'll give you... Let's not give you Bernard. Let's give you... Uh, Archibald for now. And I want you to garrison this area. Keep it held no matter the cost. We will give them more as we go along. They're, like we always, I always build them up. What we can do as well is we can tr use troops to train. We click exercise, they'll burn off. They'll burn some equipment, they'll gain some experience. Uh, the level, some of them are trained already, actually. That's all of them are. Okay. Um, right, we need a, just a random one. There's no point training at the over level 2. Uh, we'll, we'll click you, make a new army. Give you... Uh, Monty. We are going to have to name something, guys. You're going to do the name. Because I'd rather know the name and be able to see what they're doing than just do stuff. You can also change colour of this, especially when you So you're going to go from... You're going to go green. Yeah, let's give you the ace. Yeah, let's go for the ace. Uh, you're going to be responsible for training all the troops. The Egyptian frontier, you guys are going to need to just train up as well. Uh, think, uh, actually, level two already. Jeez, what about you guys? Level two. Where is that? Look at the Irish. We got green, ha! Ah! Right, yeah, look, we'll get this up. But then you guys are going to. We can't serve a front line in France because we're not allied to them yet. But we'll garrison Cornwall, and then we'll just see what happens from there. So. This has been part one. It took a while, but oh, actually, troops in. Nothing here. Nothing there. Um, okay. Well, actually, uh, this isn't part one next. I forgot. I need to do the navies. Navies. As you can see, we've got the a fleet here. Click. You can see up here what orders you can give it: patrol, search and destroy, convoy raiding, or convoy escort. Convoy escort. You defend against other shit. You defend your convoys. Simple as. Convoy raiding. You go against enemy. You go against enemy convoys. Search and destroy, you're tracking down enemy fleets to act and actively trying to engage them. And patrol is defend an area. You can also add all them to hold. I believe you can also do a naval bombardment, but I don't know how. Uh, these guys are in Sussex, which is level 6 naval base. And they're, trained, they're allowed to fight at will. Um, formation spread, has to be out fleet, is not spread out fleet, it covers my area. Has to be out fleet, it's a large battle. Quiet. Spread as many effect by one mission you ever selected. Okay. You can, say, you can say how often you want them fixed, how much you want to split off, repair now, never repair, that kind of thing. It's kind of neat. And there's also Air Force, which we need an air, base, an air base for. Now, when you may have an Air Force, you define a wing. And in this case, we can't because we haven't got any spare. And then you define where you want them to go. So, because we're in southern England, as you, well, let's turn this on to, this is an air base mode, good. You can see, like, this is all the air regions we can fight and, and cover. That's quite a lot. 
and we can define a, a, a an air wing to fight in that region. So we can have an air wing fighting over northern France or southwest England or the English Channel even, and they will fight there. You can also have your navies patrolling a certain sector like the English Channel, North Sea, that kind of thing. Danish bells, mission type neutral, you have neutral controllers. Oh, really? Okay. It's also Gibraltar, which we need to hold Gibraltar from pretty much anyone because then they can't pass and we keep the Italian fleet locked in. That's why Gibraltar and Suez are so important. Anyway, that has been that for part one. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to explain everything that's going on, nor am I going to be very good at this game, but I'm going to try my best. So, next time on Let's Play Victor uh, Victoria 2? Yeah, wrong game. Next time on Heart of Iron 4, we're going to start the campaign and we're going to see if we can control the reins of history and, t and curb Hitler's enthusiasm. I've been the Blair Kills, and I'll see you on the battlefield.